Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ryan and welcome to Central Park. We know that getting to Central Park is still pretty difficult for a lot of people, so we want to continue bringing the park to you through longer 45 minute long virtual programs held on select weekdays, as well as shorter informal 15 minute weekly walks held every Wednesday at 1230. Thank you so much for joining us for one of our weekly walks. Today's weekly walk, we're gonna be adventuring to Pilgrim Hill and checking out some of the beautiful blooms that exist there during the spring season. We're gonna to be together for about 15 minutes and just about all the photos you're gonna see were taken by myself over the past week here in Central Park. Now, let's begin. We here at the Central Park Conservancy are the nonprofit that help keep the park clean green clean and green, and our mission is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and the well-being of all. Today, we're certainly going to have a wonderful walk through the park as we adventure from about East 67th Street up to Pilgrim Hill, exploring a lot of the fresh spring, fresh spring blooms that we're seeing in the park presently. Now, as we begin our walk on 67th and 5th Avenue, we have the pleasure of walking through the park on a nice bright blue sky and fresh spring day as we start to see all the plants on the street gartering bugs and leaves and different types of blooms. As we start to enter the park, we can already see color existing all around the park's landscapes. And as we do move in, we can see some areas are just starting to bud out. It may look like there's not much happening, but it's really important we stay on the path because in just a few weeks, we're gonna see a bunch of plants and shrubs start blooming out of these little seemingly dead patches. But as we continue into the park, we can see there's plenty of areas that are already hustling and bustling with beautiful blooms and plenty of life. As we can see in the background, many, many people, kids and adults are coming to the park to play and to see the beautiful blooms that are existing here. As we continue up, we can come to some of that array of various colors. There's so many different colors to see in the springtime from white, blue, and pink to yellow. A lot of different yellow can be seen all throughout Central Park. Some of that yellow coming from patches of daffodils. Daffodils are perennial plants, meaning they live longer than two years. During the winter, they go into kind of a hibernative state and it might not look like a lot's happening, but in the spring, daffodils will bloom up in seemingly unexpected areas. You can see smaller tet o -tet daffodils or even larger wild daffodils like these, but no matter the species, you can find beauty in them all throughout New York and especially Central Park. As we move just past those daffodils, we see more color existing along the sides of Willowdale Arch. You can also see a companion to Willowdale Arch who rests just on the east side. That companion being Balto, a character we have visited a couple times before. I'm sure one who we're pretty familiar with, Balto being a famous Siberian Husky who along with countless other sled dogs and sled teams helped to deliver a diphtheria anti-serum to Nome, Alaska during a very deadly diphtherium outbreak. They saved a bunch of people and went down as basically living legends. Bolto would get his statue commemorating him and his journey the same year in 1925. We see this being sculpted by a man named Frederick Roth, who sculpted a couple other cool animal pieces in the park, like the dancing goat and the honey bear down near the Central Park Zoo. And we can see here, Balto is certainly in the spring mood, uh, holding on to some flowers that somebody politely gifted him. And we can think back though to Balto the last time we saw him, which was actually in March in the middle of a snowstorm, a very big contrast we're seeing here. And in my opinion, Balto looks a little bit happier in the snow, but it makes sense, he is a husky. As we continue past Balto, we can con go out, continue going through Willowdell Arch. Willowdell Arch looks pretty on its own, but we have a lot of color existing around it now to make it even prettier. If we look at those yellow plants, we can see forsythia, a native plant to New York that can be found all throughout New York and Central Park. It can be distinguished from some of the other yellow blooms by its longer four-petal arrangement. It grows in a viney shrub type uh, pattern and can be found along a lot of bridges and arches in the park, as well as randomly throughout other landscapes. 
as we continue through Willowdale Arch and through this nice patch of Forsythia, we'll come out to the other side, just on the east side of the mall, the only intentionally straight path of the park, which has a bunch of beautiful elm trees. You might notice that white tree just off to the right. We're not going to look at that just yet because where we're going has some amazing cherry blossom trees to witness. So as we continue walking, we can see some of the beautiful elm trees that exist on this uh, east side of the mall. We typically associate elms with being all crooked and grooved in their growth rate, but a lot of times we don't realize elms actually produce little fruits. We can see those fruits on low-lying branches as we walk by. The fruits that are produced by elm trees are called samaras. They can be seen here. Each of those little pieces has one seed in it. Really cool because you tend not to notice the flowers and fruits that are produced by these trees because they tend to last such a finite time. And on top of that, they're usually really high up in the trees and canopies. So luckily we have some low lying branches to enjoy the beauty while they last. As we continue walking, we can see some more signs of spring as we look up in the trees and see an American robin. An American robin, typically nicknamed red robin, and we can kind of see why in this picture, because of that buffy red or orange chest patch that they have. That is certainly a sign of spring when we see robins and uh, red-winged blackbirds coming into the park. They do actually symbolize renewal, so it's pretty cool to have this in a season of renewal. As we continue walking on these lesser travel paths, we'll come nearby Rumsey Playfield, which during most summers becomes the Central Park summer stage. But typically, we have a pretty open area with a seldom seen statue that's actually hidden over here. And when we come closer, we can see that statue is going to be the Mother Goose statue. It's a really cool piece that was placed here in 1938, and it's actually a relief sculpture, meaning that it started out as one big piece of granite and then was carved down to leave behind these images and depictions we see. It was made by a gentleman, Frederick Roth, the same sculptor who created Balto, which we saw earlier. If we come closer, we can see some of the characters firsthand, like Mother Goose and Mother Hubbard, as well as Mary and her little lamb. And if we slide around to the back, we can see another character who was known to have a great fall. There's quite a few other characters on this piece, and I won't spoil the surprise for you in case you wanna go see who they are for yourself. But if you, uh, want, if you wanna look it up online, you can certainly visit our website, centralparknyc.org, and search Mother Goose to find out the other characters that are on this piece. But as we continue to Pilgrim Hill, we're gonna leave this Rumsey Playfield area and we're gonna bear left as we go down these stairs, making our way towards about 72nd Street. On our way there though, we certainly see a lot of beautiful color coming from this little uh, meadow area on our left. So as we walk by, let's go check out some of that beautiful color. We saw a glance of one of the trees before, a Yoshino cherry tree. If you've noticed a lot of people coming into the park the past week, it's because of all the beautiful cherry blossom blooms that we're seeing. There's various different species you can see here in the park, like Okami cherries, Yoshino cherries, Guanzan, Sargent, Fuji, and Weeping Hygan cherries. The tree we can see here in the middle, which is, as I like to describe, purple, is an Okami cherry, and it's among the first cherry trees in the park to start blooming. These Okami cherry trees are absolutely beautiful and are arguably my favorite cherry tree to see. They have, again, as I described, more of a purple, but I guess you could say pink or magenta color. And they have my favorite part, a little red star that grows right in the middle, contrasting with the much lighter petals. These trees are great trees to sit under and enjoy a nice picnic or relaxing sit in the meadow. Really, really fun area to check out, especially with a couple different types of cherry trees. We're gonna see a bunch of Yoshino cherries, which are gonna be the white leaf cherries as we get to Pilgrim Hill. So for now, let's continue walking down towards the lake. And when we get over here, we'll get another view of a springtime tree, a star magnolia. Star magnolia is adding a little color to this otherwise seemingly bare landscape, but we can see something else pretty special when we look out. 
we can see boating is finally returning. The low boathouse is open and rowboats are being used again. A activity that certainly reminds us of spring and summer. And in my opinion, kind of uh, means that the park is coming back. The park is in the full swing of the season and we're really getting the utilization out of this park that we like to. As we continue walking towards the east now, we're gonna pass under Trefoil Arch and come towards a more natural type of landscape that still has plenty of color bouncing around. Certainly seeing a lot of different color and a lot of different plants. So let's head over east a little more and relax with a more subtle landscape, the Conservatory Water, which just borders Pilgrim Hill. Conservatory Water is a great spot for us to stop for a moment and take a nice deep breath. Looking over the calming, lightly rippling water, looking at those beautiful reflections of the buildings that stand along Fifth Avenue, and just getting a little bit of solace as we peacefully sit here and take a few deep breaths. <sighs> now that we've relaxed a little bit, let's take our relaxation one step further and go up to Pilgrim Hill and see the beautiful cherry blossom blooms that exist here during the spring season. As we continue walking up, we can see that bloom starting to occur. And looking just over to our right, we can see the otherwise bare landscape of Pilgrim Hill. It's pretty bare of people because during the springtime, this becomes more of a relaxing type of landscape. But if you joined us during the winter time, you may remember Pilgrim Hill was anything but relaxing at that point because this is a very utilized snow sledding uh, hill. So during this time, we're seeing a very big change, a lot quieter and a lot more peaceful, which is certainly what I like to enjoy when I come to Central Park. So as we continue walking up, we're coming that much closer to the top crest of Pilgrim Hill, which features an array of beautiful Yoshino cherry blossom trees. As we walk along the benches, we'll come up to a just beautiful front view of these. And whether you're enjoying them from the bench or lying on the grass under the tree, there's really no way to go wrong when you're enjoying Pilgrim Hill. When we walk a little more towards the west, we can see just how expansive this strand of elm, I'm sorry, this strand of Yoshino cherry blossoms are. They add subtle beauty to this landscape. And when we come closer, we can see just how densely packed they are, almost blocking out completely that blue sky behind us. Yoshino cherry blossoms are actually the more traditional cherry blossom from Japan. Today, we see many different species like Kwanzan, which are very bright pink, and they actually have upwards of 30 petals. They're heavily cultivated and hybridized today to produce a lot of petals and a lot of color. But in traditional Japanese or Sakura cherry blossom history and culture, Yoshinos are the prized, more original type of cherry. They contain a five petal arrangement, white and pink fading petal that really just expresses such a beautiful subtlety to it. It adds really a lot to the landscape without overpowering it, which is one of the reasons it's the more traditionally used cherry and actually the more historic cherry. There is a lot of information about cherry blossoms and we actually do have a cherry blossom virtual tour that is being offered throughout April that can give you the extent of the history behind these cherries. So if you want to learn why cherry trees are in the United States and specifically how they got to New York and eventually to Washington DC, join us for a virtual cherry blossom tour throughout April. But we can continue enjoying these trees while we're here, noticing again those nice big clusters at which from any angle provide a beautiful front view onto these cherries. As we walk underneath, we can enjoy the shady areas and the crooked growing trunks of these cherry blossom trees. As we come a little closer, start to notice something on the trunk of the cherry tree. You see what it is? They're cherry blossoms growing right out of the trunk of the tree. It's really amazing. This is something called cauliflory. Kind of sounds like cauliflower. Cauliflory is really a botanical term which relates to blooms or buds occurring out of the branches or woody trunks of these specimens. So we can actually see these cherry blossoms blooming right out of the trunk and the base of the tree. It's really cool because this bloom is occurring maybe a foot or two above the tree's trunk. 
which means that a small child or somebody in a wheelchair can actually come and get a perfect front up close view of these cherry blossoms. And it's really amazing to have access available for all to enjoy the beauty of Central Park. As we continue a little bit, we can just enjoy the subtlety of looking up at a cloud of cherry blossoms. To me, they look like they create their own clouds as the blue sky is our backdrop. As we move a little bit over to our right or towards the south, we can see the main statue or architecture that gives Pilgrim Hill its name. The Pilgrim, the Pilgrim statue, of course. This Pilgrim statue is a little shaded out today so we can't see his face, but we have a wonderful backdrop to uh, go behind him. And what we can see from the base of this statue is really where it came from. This was erected here in 1880. 85 and funding was conducted by the New England Society. It actually celebrated their 75th anniversary, as well as honored the Pilgrim Fathers landing on Plymouth Rock on December 21st, 1620. What you typically don't see by looking at the base is this little signature on the statue itself, which is by John Quincy Adams Ward, the sculptor of this piece, as well as a few others here in Central Park, like the 7th Regiment Memorial, located northwest of Sheep Meadow, or the Indian Hunter and William Shakespeare, both located on the south end of the mall near Literary Walk. John Quincy Adams Ward was an amazing sculptor, and he is typically known in America as the Dean of Sculpting. Looking at this statue, it certainly adds a nice little character to this landscape that is certainly blended perfectly with the cherry blossoms. It's interesting to see that balance between man-made art and natural art. And I certainly think we get a really good look at that here as we step back to our final view for our walk today, looking over Pilgrim Hill, enjoying the beauty of the cherry blossoms, the beauty of the architecture, and, in, and also the beauty of the season. We can see people sitting under the cherry blossoms enjoying them. And that's very fitting because during this season is when Hanami is practiced. And Hanami is simply the Japanese term for the act of enjoying these historic cherry blossom trees. Certainly a wonderful area to do so. I wanna thank you so much for enjoying the beauty of these trees with us today. Here is the route that we walked in case you wanna come visit some of these trees or some of these plants yourself. There's plenty of blooms to see in Central Park and plenty of different ways to stay involved with us here. We do offer plenty of other virtual tours that are upcoming and available on our website, centralparknyc.org, as well as information about different plants and historic areas if you'd like to learn at your own speed. But however you'd like to learn, we appreciate you for supporting Central Park and learning here today with us. Again, many other ways to stay involved and to learn about the history, the beauty, and of course, the plants of Central Park. So thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again next week as we explore the reservoir, which is arguably the best area to see cherry blossoms in Central Park. So if you didn't get enough, we'll see you next week. From all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe, be well, and thank you for joining us today.